Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight. I'm just going to let a few minutes go by so that we can let everyone in. We have 172 registered participants tonight, so good turnout. And the numbers are going up. All right. And hello. And thank you for joining us for NAFTA's annual general membership meeting. So my name is Ashley Selke, and I am the NAFTA president, at least for the next hour or so. And as for announcements for this meeting, uh, this meeting is our annual State of the Association address. So this is where I'll recap for you the association's accomplishments of the last year, then pass the reins over to our next president, Jamie Rasher. As our first official act as NAFTA president, Jamie will announce the winner of NAFTA's 2022 Veterinary Technician of the Year Award. So please stick around for that. With that, I will call this meeting to order and get down to business. So the first thing I wanna address are the questions that you submitted through our online portal. I wanna thank the individuals who took time to do so. There were only a handful of questions and they were pretty good ones. So I'm happy to answer those now. To start, Jeff Bach has asked, what changes have been or will be made to the nomination process to avoid situations that presented themselves this past election? Will the membership get to vote on those changes? So Jeff, I'm happy to say that there is a task force in place to look at the entire nomination and election process. So back on January 12th, we announced the formation of an ad hoc task force charged with several jobs. So one, reviewing NAFTA's bylaws regarding nominations and elections. Two, reviewing NAFTA's current policies related to nominations and elections. Three, evaluating the best practices on nominations and elections processes from the American Society of Association Executives and determining what, if any, enhancements can be made to NAFTA's practices. And four, developing an equitable set of criteria by which all candidates can be equally and objectively assessed as a first step in the candidate screening process. Five, establishing a proposed communications plan and timeline to ensure that information is shared openly and efficiently and six, collecting and considering member input and the nomination and election processes. The task force will be comprised of Mandy Zacco, who served on NAFTA's formal legal task force, who will serve as chair, Scott Steele, the chair of NAFTA's membership committee, and I, as chair of the 2023 nominating committee, will also be on that task force. And two at-large NAFTA credentialed veterinary technician members will round out the task force. As chair, Mandy will select two at-large members from who apply by January 31st. To be considered for one of those at-large seats, please go to the NAFTA website under latest news to see the announcement and the link to submit a letter of consideration explaining why you would like to serve on this task force. The task force must complete its work and provide its recommendations to the NAFTA board of directors no later than May 1st, 2023. If the task force recommends bylaws revisions, those changes must first go through legal review and then will be presented to the voting members for a vote. This would need to happen in the May to July time period to be in place for the start of the next nominating and election cycle, which must begin by early August. So in short, Jeff, we have formed an independent body to look at the entire nomination and election process and given the ability to recommend those changes. While we have formed this independent body to review our procedures, I want to reiterate that the nomination election process used for the last elections were legitimate and resulted in fair and accurate results. The fact that some were displeased should not shadow the accomplishments of those who were elected. We do, though, want to be responsive, responsive to those members who voiced displeasure, and that's why the task force was formed. We look forward to the task force recommendations in the coming months. Next, NAFTA member Jessica Leary also had questions specifically about the nominations and elections. First, she asked, can you provide clarity regarding candidate qualifications for president-elect and president, especially for those candidates who have previously served in those roles after being elected to the position? Thank you for the question, Jessica. NAFTA's bylaws do spell out several qualifications that must be met. The first is that that person has to be a credentialed veterinary technician, 
The second is that that person must be a NAFTA member in good standing with their dues paid through the end of the current year and must remain so for the entirety of their term. In order to be president, a member has to be president-elect and then automatically becomes president unless the board votes to prevent that automatic succession. In that case, a credentialed member would be nominated for president and that person must have served on the NAFTA board of directors for at least two of the preceding five years. In order to be considered for president-elect, the credentialed member must have served in at least one term as either NAFTA treasurer or director of the NAFTA board of directors in the preceding seven years. In addition to those requirements, the bylaws gives the board of directors the authority to set um, other requirements they deem necessary. This is done in the form of either policy statements or direction to the nominating committee. For instance, the committee considers a, lot, a list of desirable characteristics and skills when looking at candidates, among other things. These include the ability to think strategically, leadership skills, communication skills, prior board service and accomplishments, and organizational support. The committee also looks at candidates' conduct in the profession and for any potential conflicts of interest. Um, as I said earlier, the new task force will be looking at the idea of developing an equitable set of criteria for which all candidates can be equally and objectively assessed in the future. Jessica's second question was, can you explain how it is not a conflict of interest for current executive board members, especially those who are also serving on the nominating committee, to make public posts on both multiple social media outlets endorsing one candidate over others? This refers to a message posted on our social media in December by the chair of the nominating committee, Ed Carlson, who supported a particular candidate. Many of us thought that this was a conflict of interest and Ed quickly removed the post. At a special meeting of the board of directors in December, held specifically to address the election issues, Ed apologized and agreed to abide by any sanctions the board might put in place. The board discussed the matter in depth and noted Ed's apology. The quick removal of the post and importantly, the withdrawal from the election of the person Ed endorsed, the board determined that no further action was necessary. And let me add here too that Ed asked me to apologize on his behalf to you, the NAFTA members for his mistake. He is sincere in his contrition and regrets this has cast a shadow on NAFTA and him, especially as he ends his service on the NAFTA board. I also wanna note that NAFTA will be creating clear guidelines for future nominating committee members, including a social media policy. Jessica also asks, what type of accountability is in place for board members who violate NAFTA's code of ethics? I'm glad you asked that, Jessica, because right now NAFTA doesn't have a formal policy on procedure in place to handle charges of an ethics violation. We do have procedures in place for suspected violations of our code of conduct, our conflict of interest policy, and when someone is believed to have acted against the best interest of the profession or the association. Those procedures include filing a written complaint with the NAFTA president, then the president can either appoint a task force to investigate or invite the subject of the complaint to a hearing before the board. Either a disciplinary panel or the board then decides the appropriate action. We'll use these procedures already in place as a model for creating procedures to handle any changes of ethics violations, any charges. Thankfully, we haven't had any of those charges, but we will need to have a procedure in place just in case. Jessica's final question was, can you provide a timeline for when changes to bylaws are going into effect? Thankfully, Jessica, all of the bylaws are now in effect. You can find them in the link at the bottom of NAFTA's homepage at nafta.net. Moving to the next member question was Taylor McIntyre asked, what can we do to get title protection? How can we get doctors to respect our title just like they want to respect for theirs? This relates to a question from Melissa Finlayson who asked, how do you plan to help states like Connecticut where licensing is voluntary and there are no regulations or differentiations between license texts and everyone else? How do you plan to change states like Wisconsin who allow people to sit for the vt &E with three years of on the job training, take the test through Wisconsin and transfer licenses to places like Connecticut? So Taylor and Melissa, we hear you about this. In our 2022 demographic survey and our recent mid-level practitioner survey clearly pointed out that title protection was the second most important issue for veterinary technicians, right behind salary and wages. And scope of work, are clearly differentiating tasks for credentialed and uncredentialed staff was next in line. The demographic survey also showed that fewer than 10% of practices are doing 
anything to protect the veterinary technician title or to differentiate the duties of credentialed veterinary technicians from other non-credentialed staff. So we know this is a big issue. In the last 12 months alone, NAFTA has worked with 17 state veterinary technician associations that are trying to develop title protection in their states. That's the way this will have to get done on a state by state basis, because there's no easy way to get federal title protection. So if you wanna begin the legislative process to have title protection or defined scope of work in your state, our government relations committee can help you with sample letters to write. They can also help coach you through the legislative process if you're not familiar with that. That being so, it will be critical for you to get the support of your state VMA. So that's where you should start. Most VMAs hold significant legislation sway, legislative sway in their states. So if you don't have their support, they could derail your efforts. Start there and keep NAFTA informed in your progress. We can jump in and help with letters of support, expert testimony, or other information and assistance. I should also add that NAFTA is engaged in active conversations with stakeholders like AVMA, VHMA, AHA, AAVSB, and AAVMC that can make a big difference on this issue. One of the things we're talking about is creating a mandatory track of education for veterinarians that would make them aware of the scope of work, education, skills required to be a credentialed veterinary technician. Much of the problem stems from the fact that DVMs just don't know all that we can do. In short, we're pushing from the top down, and if you push from the states up, we'll see success. So by the way, in 2021, uh, NAFTA endorsed the AAVSB model scope of practice for veterinary technicians. While it is not mandatory that states use this model, it is a starting point for states who want to work on this. You can find that at aavsb.org under board services. Finally, uh, Jeff Bacchus, who asked the first question, also asked what, if any, progress was made on the VNI in 2022 and what are goals for it in 2023? So I want to thank you again, Jeff, for that question and the opportunity to talk about the VNI. For those unfamiliar with the VNI, it stands for Veterinary Nurse Initiative, but I like to refer to it as the Veterinary Nursing Initiative. I use nursing instead of nurse because I think that it's more clearly and accurately speaks of the entirety of what the initiative is all about. After all, the VNI has four distinct goals, only one of which includes work related to the veterinary nurse title. The goals of the VNI are to one, promote a standard credential for all veterinary technicians, nurses in the United States, two, establish a positive professional identity for all veterinary technicians, nurses, Three, clarify the value and scope of practice in the title of veterinary technicians. And four, expand the career potential for all who practice veterinary technology and nursing. I've already talked about how NAFTA has helped in 17 states this last year by promoting standardized credentials, harmonized scopes of practice, and title protection. So those activities relate to goals one and three of the VNI. Last year, the VNI also created the title protection report. In-depth analysis showed that 31 states and jurisdictions have no title protection for veterinary technician within their veterinary practice acts, and another 10 states have only limited title protection. The report also showed that nearly 40% of veterinary technicians were misinformed about their state's title protection laws. When asked if their state restricts the title of veterinary technician to those licensed through the state law, only 61% of responses were consistent with their actual status of their title protection in their states. To cure these problems, the report provided recommendations for legislatures and regulatory agencies, academic institutions, veterinary medical and technician associations, veterinary practices, and others. The report was distributed widely to the profession and in just two days uh, will be presented to the executive directors at state VMAs, courtesy of the VMAE. So we're getting the word out there. With regard to goal two, establishing a positive professional image, our greatest success last year was sponsoring a consumer survey that gauged the public's understanding and appreciation for veterinary technicians. The results of the survey conducted by NAFSI and called the Veterinary Nurse Technician Empowerment in Initiative generated widespread media coverage in the consumer press. This includes more than 4,200 media stories with an audience reach of 757 million people. It's pretty amazing. 
one specific article based on the survey results titled Putting Your Pets in the Best of Hands generated an estimated 1,300 news articles and consumer publications in 47 states and reached an audience of 105 million. We're happy to say that we'll be working with NAFSI again this year on the next steps of this initiative. I do want to add something that's very important related to the VNI, and that's the whole issue of the veterinary nurse title. Our 2022 demographic survey pointed out that 85% of veterinary technicians prefer the title that includes the words veterinary nurse. So this includes registered veterinary nurse, licensed veterinary nurse, licensed medical veterinary nurse, certified veterinary nurse, and credentialed veterinary nurse. Now, don't misinterpret this as NAFTA's position on the title issue. This is just data that shows our members want this title, and it gives the board a clear indication of what members want. The only position NAFTA has taken on the nurse title issue was back in December of 2021, when we publicly urged employers who chose to use the nurse title to reserve its use for only those who hold a valid veterinary technician credential from their state those with a valid CBT, LVT, LVMT, or RVT designation. That being so, in April 2021, we did receive legal opinion from an attorney, formerly with the Federal Trade Commission, that the use of the title veterinary nurse could be permissible. The attorney noted that the use of veterinary nurse is not deceptive to the public, is clearly different and cannot be confused with a human nurse, and does no harm to the human nurse profession. Correctly, the attorney also pointed out that the use of the nurse title will be a state-by-state -state issue since there is no federal title protection. And that's exactly where NAFTA stands uh, focus has been, helping state veterinary technician associations who have been or wish to pursue this. As far as 2023 goals for the VNI, there will be research into each state's scope of practice, continued work with our stakeholders on educating the profession and public about veterinary technicians, and of course, work with the states who are looking to enact title protection and credentialing standards. We'll also be working on an automated utilization tool that will allow practices to not only see how they will utilize their techs, but also see the dollar value associated with the higher utilization. So Jeff, I know that that was a long answer to your question, but there was so much to cover and I didn't wanna leave anything out and it was all so very important. Again, thank you all for all your questions and most of all your dedication to NAFTA. Your input will help make us an even stronger organization. So now onto the rest of the annual meeting. Believe it or not, there was more we did in the last year and most of it was very successful. One of the ways we measure success is by looking at our finances. I'm happy to report that NAFTA had a very good financial year in 2022, at least according to our unaudited financial reports. As of December 31, 2022, NAFTA ended the year with a positive net gain of nearly $77,000. This is nearly twice that of what we budgeted. Total revenue was just under $713,000, while total expenses were about $636,000. Membership dues was at an all-time high, passing $240,000 and accounting for about 40% of our total income. Compared with last year, NAFTA's total assets, cash, savings accounts, receivable, and other items increased by 167,000, which is 17% increase. These are all positive signs of NAFTA's growth. Another positive sign of growth is our membership. As of last week, NAFTA boasted uh, a membership of 9,275 individuals. That's an increase of 775 people or 9.1% over the last year. The NAFTA membership includes more than 6,300 credentialed veterinary technician members in the U.S. It also includes 1,975 veterinary technician students and nearly 1,000 associate members, defined as those who don't qualify as credentialed veterinary technicians in the U.S. So thank you for being a part of the NAFTA family and helping us be so successful in 2022. Our success is a direct result of your involvement and trust in NAFTA, and I thank you all for that. A lot of NAFTA's success has been attributed to the fact that we were focused on our strategic plan. The plan has five primary areas with specific objectives for each area. Those five areas are one, advocacy, being the voice of the profession in all arenas. Two, awareness, 
making sure those in the profession as well as the public know about veterinary technicians. Three, infrastructure, ensuring we are structured, governed, and aligned to maximize financial, staff, and volunteer resources. Four, membership, being a growing community of members who find participation relevant and valuable. And five, professional development supporting and encouraging members to expand their knowledge and expertise in veterinary nursing. I could spend the next half hour talking about the work that's been done in each of these areas, but I won't. Instead, I wanna share a poster we created last year, which you'll see on the screen, that highlighted the top 10 things NAFTA had done. I hope you've seen this already, but in case you've missed it, here it is. As you see, this list includes Increasing membership from 6,500 to more than 8,500 in just over two years. That's now over 9,200. Published an industry-wide recommendation that only credentialed veterinary technicians should qualify for veterinary nurse job postings. We created a strong productive relationship with the AVMA, leading to regular dialogue and collaboration that benefits both organizations and our members. We provided more than 20 hours of free virtual leading edge continuing education to our members. We formed NAPTA's first ever Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Committee with charges to enhance and enlighten NAPTA's efforts in all of those areas. We created a Government Relations Committee to increase the effectiveness of our critical efforts in regulatory and legislative work. And we launched the Tuition for Tech Scholarship Program with BI, providing 50,000 in tuition assistance to qualifying students in vet tech schools. Of course, that list was out of date as soon as it was published, but it gives you a good idea of the things that we've done. One of the more important accomplishments not on that list is NAFTA's recent position statement on the mid-level practitioner position. If you missed the announcement earlier this month, um, I attended the AVMA VLC where we said that although credentialed veterinary technicians have interest in the mid-level practitioner concept as a goal or long-term project to be accomplished over time, it is not an issue that needs to be addressed right now. We base this statement on clear data we received from you in the December 2022 survey. That survey showed very clearly that you are more concerned with title protection for the veterinary technician title optimizing veterinary technician utilization, and increasing veterinary technician wages and compensation. In fact, in a list of eight current hot topics, the creation of mid-level practitioner position for credentialed veterinary technicians ranked seventh, ahead of only creating such a position for non-technicians, for which there was virtually no support. Of course, the NAFTA Board of Directors agreed with the overwhelming data in the survey, and we very definitively asserted that the profession needs to put its efforts behind the issues of title protection, utilization, and higher wages. NAFTA has already been in conversations with organizations involved in the development of several iterations of the mid-level practitioner position. We will continue to be involved in this issue, but we want you to know that the association will be using its valued and limited resources in the other areas of concern expressed by its members. So title protection, utilization, and wages and compensation. At this point, I would like to thank the incredible individuals who served with me on the board over this last year. The NAFTA Board of Directors worked so hard and put in so many hours last year, none of it compensated in any way. These incredible leaders were Ed Carlson, who is the immediate past president, Jamie Rauscher, president-elect, Harold Davis as treasurer, Mandy Fultz as secretary, Marielle Hendricks as director, and Ryan Frazier as director. So both Ed and Mandy are completing their terms on the board tonight. So I would like to offer you both extra thanks and a virtual standing ovation. Thank you both for all you did for NAFTA. We appreciate you so much. And now my term as NAFTA president comes to a close. It really has been a wonderful experience leading NAFTA for the past year. There certainly were challenges and uh, uh, lots of learning opportunities, but I'm pleased that I can leave office with NAFTA in a very good place. I'm equally happy knowing that I leave NAFTA in the capable hands of our next president, Jamie Rauscher. Jamie has been a committed NAFTA member for more than 10 years, 
If you've ever been to a NAFTA booth at either VMX or Western, you've likely met Jamie. She can always be counted on to spend hours at the booth signing up new members and getting existing members to renew their memberships. Jamie is a licensed veterinary technician in Georgia with over 25 years of experience. She has multiple certifications, including Fear Free, Elite, Human Animal Bond, Animal Hospice, and Palliative Care, and is working on her VTS in Emergency and Critical Care. She is the medical manager and part owner of a large 13 doctor, 24 seven practice just north of Atlanta. In addition to her NAFTA work and real job, Jamie is also the president of Georgia's Veterinary Technician Association. When not working or volunteering, when is that for Jamie? She's always working. Jamie spends time with her husband, Mark, her son, Ty, and golden retriever named Sadie. And she has three cats. She has Yoda, Kitty, and Pito. Without further delay and with great anticipation, I now pronounce, present to you NAFTA's president, Jamie Roucher. Thank you, Ashley. It's been a privilege working with you over the past year. I really appreciate all you've done for NAFTA and how you've led the board, especially through some difficult times, both personally and professionally. You showed great character, professionalism, and resilience. Your positive can-do attitude was contagious, and you always lit up a room with your energy and positivity. Thank you for that. I know, too, that you've made many personal sacrifices over the past year, putting others ahead of yourself and your needs. That's why the NAFTA board is sending you some very much needed self-care gifts as tokens of our appreciation. Please be sure to use them and enjoy the me time. Let me start my term by welcoming two new members to the board of directors. Becky Mosser's term as president-elect begins tonight, as does Heather Pendergast's term as director. These two veterans, well known to just about everyone in the profession, are sure to be great assets to NAFTA, and I look forward to working with them. Congratulations and welcome Becky and Heather. I also want to note that Ryan Frazier was reelected to the board of, for another two-year term. Ryan, it's good to have you back. Listening to Ashley answer your questions and highlight NAFTA's accomplishments gave me great appreciation for how busy NAFTA has been over the last year. It's funny, when you're the, in the midst of doing things and being busy, you don't realize how much you're truly accomplishing. It's not until you stop and take a look back when you realize and can appreciate the work that you're doing. And as Ashley noted, my life is very busy, but I think that busyness is an asset to NAFTA. Working at a 24 seven hospital has me on the floor on average six days a week, usually totaling more than 60 hours a week. That busyness allows me to experience everything that you as members are experiencing. That includes fatigue, unhappy clients, and all the other stressors that come with our job. But it also includes all of the great things that come with being a credential veterinary technician. The joy of seeing a patient recover from surgery, the love exchanged with a cat who only responds to you, the appreciation shown by a client because you saved their beloved pet. I'm there with you and I experience those things every day and I hear you. And I also will bring these experiences to my presidency with NAFTA. That's why NAFTA's focus over the two years of my presidency will be on the things that matter most for veterinary technicians, wages and compensation, title protection, improved utilization and wellness. I would also add to that list a few things that are important to NAFTA's continued success, like membership growth, valuable new programs, and better communication with our members. Ashley already mentioned some of the ways we'll be addressing the critical veterinary technician issues. For instance, we know that we cannot fix the compensation issue by ourselves. We have to work with our stakeholders, AVMA, VHMA, AHA and others to help educate them on the value of veterinary technicians and get them to understand the economic impact a well-trained, well-utilized veterinary technician can have on their practices. 
we have to show them the money that they could make. So there is a connection between the work we do and their bottom lines. We also have to arm you with tools you can use in your conversations and negotiations with those who determine your pay. Those things are on our agenda for this year. We also know we have to continue to help states in their legislative and regulatory work towards getting title protection and a standardized scope of practice, or at least as standard as we can get across all states. And we know we need to do more to help you take care of yourselves, myself including. We have to get better at teaching and giving permission for veterinary technicians to take care of themselves. Our 2022 demographic survey showed that nearly one third of all respondents know someone in the veterinary community who died by suicide. If you're sitting next to two vet tech friends right now, odds are one of you knows someone who died by suicide, myself including. The survey also told us that more than 60% of you are concerned about someone dying by suicide. That's a crisis that needs to be addressed and NAFTA will be working on it. This is a major opportunity for practices to make a big impact on their employees by implementing some simple but effective communication and counseling services. There are many employee assistance programs out there that can be implemented in a matter of days and for a relatively low cost. So we'll be working with our colleagues at the Hospital Managers Association and AHA to get these things in place. A quick note, if you or someone you know is in a crisis, please, please reach out for help. You have friends at NAFTA who can help. Or you can simply dial 988 from your cell phone and get connected with professionals at the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Ashley also mentioned our great membership growth over the past year. Much of that success can be attributed to our hiring of a firm with expertise in association membership recruitment and retention. That group, Marketing General Incorporated, created and implemented social media ads and conducted phone calls to get former members to come back and to remind current members to renew. Their results were outstanding. In the fourth quarter of 2022 alone, we collected 2023 dues revenue that nearly matched the amount we had collected in all of 2022. MGI's work in 2023 will focus on new member recruitment. As we've all heard, there's something like 90 to 100,000 veterinary technicians in the United States, and we want all of them to be NAFTA members. MGI's first recruitment programs will be through LinkedIn and Facebook, where we have already identified nearly 90,000 qualified new member leads. We've given MGI a goal of increasing membership by 850 new members for the year. We know this is a lofty goal, but it does not seem unreasonable. Another potential source of new members will come from a new program that will be launched next month. I'm also happy to announce that the long-awaited Infection Prevention Program will launch in February at WVC. NAFTA and Virox have collaborated to create a four-part online self-study course that dives deep into infection prevention at veterinary hospitals and clinics. The program will be offered free to everyone. Yes, free to everyone. The NAFTA board decided this program was too important to put any barriers to inclusion, so we are offering it to everyone at no cost. At the completion of the program, which will include quizzes for each module and then a final exam, successful candidates will receive a certificate, don't, excuse me, a certificate denoting them as an infection prevention leader. Look for details on the NAFTA website in mid-February. There is one more thing that I would like to mention as a new initiative for the coming year. It will be a focus of mine to increase the communication between the NAFTA board and you, the NAFTA members. There is so much that NAFTA is doing, so many good things, but unless we tell you about it, you're in the dark. And that can lead to incorrect con conclusions, assumptions, and the feeling that we're trying to hide things. That could not be farther from the truth. 
we know we have to get better at communicating with you. The board discussed this earlier this month and we're coming up with a plan that will ensure you have access to information and feel like you know what's going on. The other side of that is the fact that communication is a two-way street. So later this week, we'll be introducing a feedback portal on the NAFTA website. This will be an easy way for you to ask questions, provide feedback, file a complaint, or give us a compliment. In short, it will be an easy way you can reach out to us without having to remember anyone's email address or try to figure out who you should write to. As I said at the start of my remarks, I will be focusing on the things that matter to all of us over the next two years. Things like wages, title protection, utilization, wellness, and membership growth. I invite you to be part of NAFTA's efforts in all of these areas or in any other area where your passion lies. Please feel free to email me through the info at nafta.net address if you would like to get involved. We are always looking for new ideas, new perspectives, and fresh energy. So now as my first official duty as NAFTA president, I get to present NAFTA's Veterinary Technician of the Year Award. This award is presented to a NAFTA member who has provided leadership and contributed to the association and the overall betterment of the industry. All NAFTA members are able to nominate a fellow member for this award. This year's Veterinary Technician of the Year has been a NAFTA member for just over two years and has made quite an impact in that time. In nominating the winner, her colleague wrote, this person has proven to be a very capable leader, working with her veterinary faculty, providing direction and confidence to her team. In her role as an academic program director, she was recognized as the, as the program's greatest strength by the CVTEA site's team members. These exceptional strengths also benefit many nonprofit organizations where this person contributes her knowledge and leadership skills as an advisory board member. Earlier this year, this person started engaging with NAFTA in search of new opportunities for our profession in Puerto Rico. Today, she is the primary point of contact for NAFTA's District 4. With this initiative, she has inspired and engaged with the professional community around her to become involved with NAFTA, resulting in a recent selection of two students from Puerto Rico as recipients of the NAFTA BI Tuition for Technicians Scholarship Award. The 2022 Veterinary Technician of the Year is an outstanding young woman with exceptional leadership skills and a wonderful work ethic. She contributes to our profession by providing the direction, education, and support that our young professionals in Puerto Rico urgently need. NAFTA is proud to bestow the 2022 Veterinary Technician of the Year Award on Rochelle Cortez Martinez. Rochelle is an LVTG and works as the Veterinary Technology Program Director at Universidad Ana G. Mendez in Ponce, Puerto Rico. We are very happy to have Rochelle join us tonight. Rochelle, please say a few words. Hi, thank you all so much for this opportunity. I am very excited. Um, I want to thank NAFTA for the opportunity not for not only um, giving me the opportunity to showcase um, my contributions, but also all of the contributions that the profession in Puerto Rico um, gives to um, the overall profession um, for technicians. Um, and I'm so excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> I really hope that this uh, recognition motivates other veterinary technicians in NAFTA and in Puerto Rico to continue working really hard and consistently towards the betterment that we're looking for in our profession. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rochelle. And congratulations again from the NAFTA board and the entire membership. Well, I couldn't think of a better way to end the annual meeting. Let's keep that productive and professional dialogue going. I'm so glad for the opportunities the members have had to submit questions. Please feel free to reach out to us at info at NAFTA.net and let's keep this conversation going. Let's all work together to keep NAFTA moving ahead. And remember, I hear you.
Thank you and good night.